Okay. Hello, everybody. I am attempting to see if I can't uh, get a little bit of audio going here. One moment. Here, audio going. Beautiful. So I can definitely hear that. Now, if I then push our lovely guests to this stream, hopefully that means that I'll be able to hear you. Brett, can I get you to say a few words? Oh dear, we froze him. Sorry, that was my there we go. Excellent. Lovely. And then if I then push uh, the lovely Claire to the stage. Hello, Claire. Yay. Yay. Can you go? Oh, I think I froze as well. Yeah. So I don't All know right. why it wouldn't let me listen to everyone in backstage, but at least you guys could hear each other. So mm -hmm. that's nice. Exciting. Um, but oh, so I am so excited to see you today, Claire. It's been literal years. Probably a couple of years, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to welcome everybody to this very first ever uh, adventure hour. Thank you so much, Claire, for joining us. Uh, and thank you so much to Brett fellow Story City uh, staffer here who's joining us City um, eight. as well. Exactly. City Slicker. Yeah, that's the one. Um, the whole point of Adventure Hour is that we get to speak to one of the lovely creators on um, Story City and catch up with them, what they've been doing, what's been going on in their life. But at the same time, uh, for everyone's uh, enjoyment and pleasure, we're also going to be doing a live Choose Your Own Adventure um, now, for anyone who doesn't know, Story City is an app that allows you to do real life choose your own adventures in cities. So it only unlocks a particular part of the story if you're standing in the right location. Uh, and we have had stories across um, both Australia and in Canada. But the wonderful uh, Claire Neal, who is here with us, bottom right hand corner, um, was one of our um, amazing creators for some of the Brisbane Choose Your Own Adventures that we have. And so Claire is a uh, brilliant visual artist. Um, she uh, has done uh, four <laughs> adventures on the Story City app. Uh, in fact, in this kind of uh, holding image that we have here um, in the bottom corner there is one of hers, like peeking out around the corner of her, uh, of her window there. Um, so uh, I'd like to have a, a little bit of a chat to Claire in just a minute, but to give you guys a sneak peek into the adventure that we're doing today, um, it is an adventure called The Infected. Now, I know that we have all lived through a pandemic, so we can definitely feel in our bones this particular Choose Your Adventure um, because it is um, very specifically about trying to find a cure for a deadly disease. Um, it is originally set so that you are meant to be doing it in the Brisbane Botanic Garden. So we're going to be able to bring up a, a bit of a street view here of uh, Botanic Gardens, hopefully. It's, it's less, Google's less reliable with gardens than it is with, um, than it is with um, ones that are kind of through the city streets, but we will see what we get. Um, but to give you a little bit of a... Um, breakdown as to what the uh, infected is all about. Brisbane has been infected with a deadly disease. It is up to you to find the ingredients to make the cure. You have been under quarantine in your home for the past four days. Oh, oh no, four days. Oh no, oh, no. If, only, if only four days. Uh, but this morning, your Uncle Frederick burst through the door and said he needed your help to cure the disease. Luckily, the Brisbane Botanic Gardens aren't too far away and they are teeming with medicinal plants. And luckily, the gardens are also crawling with infected. The clock is ticking. Can you create a cure in time? So this is going to be a live read of that story. We're going to be showing some of the amazing art done by Claire. 
Um, we are going to be arguing our way through the Choose Your Own Adventure because you do get choices and it does change the ending of this story. So um, I suppose the only other thing to do before we uh, dive into a little kind of chat with Claire is to introduce everybody to my lovely partner in crime in this uh, top corner here, uh, Brett Ludwig. He is the CTO of Story City. Um, he is an acapella nerd, putting on an acapella festival this year in March. So he has a, has a excellent um, pipes, if pipes. Not my word. So we're going to take them from singing and use them for voice acting. Um, and uh, and I am Emily. I uh, am the kind of the CEO and publisher at Story City. Um, I come from a background of writing, so I've written um, a lot of novels. I've edited a lot of interactive fiction. Um, and I am also <laughs> uh, a uh, karaoke queen. So you can see why Brett and I. Yeah, Absolutely. 100%. Uh, Emily came out to uh, my birthday this summer and just belted out so many tunes. Yeah, incredible. Mm -hmm. So Claire, you are the wonderful illustrator for um, The Infected and several other of the adventures on Story City. So I just wanted to check in with you. How has life been? I hear that you uh, moved to one of the very cultural uh, hubs <laughs> in Australia recently. Uh, yeah, I've, oh, my sound is going a bit weird. Sorry, just bear with me. You are all. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, bear with me for a second. <laughs> this is why I was There's trying to get the backstage to work, right? So that we could like <laughs> do this yeah. backstage. This yeah. right. Live alone. That's okay. I'm just going to talk through it. <laughs> so I, yeah, I've been really busy. I've moved to Sydney in the past year and I have been doing my thing down here, um, working a lot in radio and also at a creative arts university. Um, so doing a lot of arty things still, still drawing. Um, and and I think I recognise one of the prints behind you. That's yours, right? The, the black uh, and white one? Yeah, that's one of mine. Actually, the snake and the blue girl are also mine. Um, the, the bull is a friend and the... That's a, I don't know, that's just a print. <laughs> nice, I like it. Because you've been in um, in radio for, for a while, right? You did, like, promotion-related things. You you ran a show in Brisbane for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, I um, as of a week or so ago, I think it was my seventh anniversary of producing radio. So I've been doing it for quite a while. <laughs> that's crazy. I love that so much. Yeah. Um, but and and so you, um, I'm gonna show off like some of your artwork in just a minute. But um, have you been doing any, um, I suppose, like uh, any particular projects recently? I know that you put on a couple of uh, exhibits um, as well, because you've done like not only like multimedia kind of art pieces for us, and then you've done these beautiful um, drawn pieces that everyone will see in this particular adventure, like. What are you playing with at the moment? Because every time I speak to you, you're never doing the same type of art twice. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I guess lately I've, yeah, I've, really, yeah, no, not much has changed. Um, I've recently done a mural on a wall. Um, I've been doing a lot of murals over the past few years, um, all different things. There's kind of like a walking trail around Brisbane now for that as well. But I've just gotten to do some down in Sydney now, which is pretty fun. Um, I just did... Um, like a menu for a restaurant, um, merch design, a bunch of posters, and also just a lot of marketing stuff for the different radio stations and uh, the university that I work at as well. So uh, lots of graphics, lots of murals, and lots of illustration as usual. So yeah, I haven't, I haven't slowed down him. <laughs> Um, and I am completely a not a visual person. Like I, you ask me to to draw something, I am stick finger stick figures um, with finger painting. That is <laughs> that is how good I am at visuals. So I'm always curious. Like what? Um, how do you go about making a piece? I want to know. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be like. I'm gonna be that person who asks you where you get your ideas from. Um. 
Good question. <laughs> I think I just try to keep my mind really open. I am really inspired by nature, um, as you'll probably see when I, you know, go through the story with you guys later on. Um, and I always have enjoyed the idea of blending together elements just through lateral thought. So a lot of my artwork is sort of, I wouldn't say abstract because I have a lot of um, technique like anatomical sort of drawing and things like that but I guess the way that those components come together is where the real creativity is with my artwork um particularly in my drawing um but then I would say it's different across the board and definitely the ways that I produce art in different mediums um like a lot of the time I kind of think of doing my graphic design kind of like reverse engineering my drawing because I feel like I'm always working backwards when I graphic design so um yeah and murals are the same so I think it's sort of um just a little bit of a challenge every single way and I think that's what's amazing about art there's no real guidebook and step-by-step -step process it's just all about trusting your instincts so yeah nice. creative expression <laughs> I love that a lot um it, was it kind of weird to because like creating art for a, a, a story which is as, as highly specific as this like choose your own adventure that we're doing today like was that a different process for you like was no like I was so that? inspired um going into this story particularly uh one of the really cool things that we got to do and I don't even know if you remember this Em, but we got taken on that tour through the gardens um and that was amazing because the expert guide that was taking us through gave us sort of like a play-by-play -play for the properties of the different plants and um you know like there was a there was a particular bush that people once used to cure toothaches and there was something that used, used to be i don't know like detergent um, I'm just going to mute this because it's driving me crazy. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, it was definitely um, more than I think the other stories, um, just in terms of the education that we all got as, like, a crew before going into production. Uh, it was really special. And I actually came away from this particular story with so much curiosity for what I was drawing, and I'm sure that was probably the case with the writers as well like i feel like everyone was super inspired going in yeah i um i i think that that was i i do i i had completely forgotten that we'd gotten that tour until you you mentioned it again and i was like oh my god that's right and they were telling us about these nuts that they would like soak for like 30 days in a stream and then they would bash it and then they would put it in the stream for another 20 days and and then it was edible and I was like how bullheaded did you have to be to like be like Very okay patient. this didn't work the first time but maybe if I soak it more <laughs> this will be high in protein and I won't die <laughs> Just, yeah, it's that it's that it's persistence versus resistance age-old proverb <laughs> yeah yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, no, that 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 did that did bring back memories of of that, and and I think that that's what I love about like these kind of adventures is that like yes, it is the whole point is that you're like you're choosing your own adventure, you're trying to find a cure for a disease, but at the same time, like you you see all of these awesome and cool things, and if I remember correctly, there were some plants that we got told the properties of, and then we were told under no certain terms were we allowed to include them in the story. So. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a there's this one particular tree that had these uh, trumpet like white flowers, um, which if treated in a particular way are a hallucinogen, and um, they under no certain terms wanted us to include that tree, even if we were not going to talk about the properties of that tree, um, because they had had instances where people had come into the gardens and tried to steal. <laughs> Yeah, had tramped all over the garden beds to try and steal these hallucinogenic flowers. Um, yes, yeah. so yeah, that was yeah, that was hilarious. No, this is it. I'm really glad that we're doing this story today because I think, um, because I was involved with so many of the stories here in Brisbane, this one was because it was in the gardens, it kind of did have that unique aspect of being kind of like an educational experience unto itself. I think that it sort of 
um, had an edge that way over some of the other stories and um, made for a really cool day out, really. Yeah, it, uh, it, yeah, it really did. And I actually, I, I think I want to show people in comparison, I'd like to show them what, um, what the other artwork, because the other artwork was much more multimedia than the artwork that we're going to see in, in this particular um, yeah. story. So I think I'd like to show this as kind of like a, like a juxtaposition um, to that. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's uh, switch gears here for a moment. So um, this here on the, the left-hand side is the, the multimedia kind of um, artwork that, that Claire did for, for a bunch of the uh, other stories in Brisbane. So this one in particular is a story about a monster who gets loose from a lab and you're deciding whether you're going to um, uh, help it uh, continue its escape or whether you're going to work with the authorities to capture it. Um, so these these kind of images are all around that idea of um, whether we're going to be helping or capturing a monster. And so these different elements, there's like I don't you you wouldn't be able to tell without standing in the location, but this in the back area here is is one of the bridges that you get to be in, um, and and the net that's kind of coming to catch uh, the the monster in a particular um, setting and scenario. Um, and so there's this kind of beautiful. Uh, half kind of illustration, half multimedia uh, kind of pieces, um, and then there's I like I've done these. <laughs> right, like it's it's interesting to go back and have a look. So there's these beautiful. This is kind of from a ghost story where a ghost ship has appeared in the uh, in the bay, and you are as a ghost hunter are trying to figure out why it's there and and um, and how you can help. Um, and so so that's got you know beautiful, creepy, eerie ghosts and, um, you know, soldiers and, um, you know, fish fountains that come to life and monsters that appear in the swamps and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, and then the, the other one, which was a, um, a, a beautiful um, look into all of the genres, which was a, a, a story that was a, 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 a private investigator story. So it was in kind of an area that had these weird, funky pieces of public artwork. And if you went down one direction, it got very sci-fi. Uh, and if you went down another direction, it started to get very fantasy. Uh, another direction was very spook, spy, satellite story. Um, and then you compare it to this absolutely beautiful illustration here which is from um the the adventure that we're doing today and and like just the 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 breadth of um your ability to 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 be that um that kind of multifaceted um uh artist is you know we're we're very lucky to to have um had uh the chance to work with you multiple times so it excites me a lot oh my pleasure thank you for having me <laughs> All right, so today we are reading through uh, The Infected. I am going to be uh, bringing up a uh, Google Street View. So let's see how we go with this. Mapsgoogle.com. Uh, we're going to be in the Brisbane Botanic Garden. One day we might do a, maybe like a live one where like we'll, we'll throw some poor person out into the field and like they'll do, like they'll be streaming from their phone. As they're with like a GoPro. Wandering. Yeah, with it, as they're wandering like the gardens. <laughs> like, um, but for the like moment. Like a selfie stick. Right? <laughs> um, but for the moment, let's see what we can achieve here with Google Street View. Oh, that's it's not like totally unlike what has been done now. Uh, by Twitch before, where the the chat tells someone where to walk or what to do in their uh, their own space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which you know, I'm sure I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go. This is only this is only week one of this of this uh, of this stream. Um, this is also going to be turning into a podcast as well. So anyone who's listening to this as a podcast, apologies, you won't be able to see the the street view. Um, oh dear. Apparently, I haven't plugged my computer in. One moment, everybody. <laughs> We're doing the shimmy dance. Da -da 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 -da. music. Yeah. I wished I had a muppet so that I could just be like. Oh, I do have actually. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> 
I got this. I got this. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Amazing. There we go. <laughs> That's so great. Your mother out for the day. Um. All right. So, uh, did you want to join us in voice acting some of the parts, Claire, or do you want uh, Brett and I to take take it away? Um, I trust you guys to do it. Do I still get to choose what the adventure is? Oh, yes, yes, we will be okay, cool. as a team, yeah. hopefully with the others in the chat stream, arguing about where we are going to be going. So Excellent. that is... That I'll find is, everyone. That is definitely, exactly, exactly. All right. So we'll have this ready and raring to go. I think the easiest way, Brett, is probably to have one person do any uh voices and the other person okay. to be a narrator and then we just switch it out so that you know, it doesn't get boring okay deal That's why we choose your adventure it um mm -hmm. i i volunteer as first narrator <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> voice we, acting opt out and then we can <laughs> we can go from <laughs> we can go from there all right so making it up as we go along it's fine it's fine um, okay, so we are back to sharing uh, our screen. So here we are, Brisbane Botanic Gardens. Very wow. lovely, very beautiful. This here is the uh, the planetarium. Um, we're actually after a, a statue, which I think is on the opposite side of the planetarium. Uh, so. Tell the GoPro guy side. to walk around it. Right? Like, I love this planetarium. Can I just say it is probably one of my favorite places to go hang out in Brisbane. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. I uh, yeah. oh no, must have been this direction. Must have been over here. <laughs> oh, gates! This is the gates of the the botanic garden. Very lovely, very delightful. The statue's right over there. Come on, it is beautiful. Come on, it's very tropical. It's gorgeous. It's very yeah, I did not know yeah. you guys had palm trees in Australia. There. Oh baby in Queensland. Many, many afternoons were spent here when I was a little girl, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the statue, the, this damn statue's literally just there. Oh, oh, this is driving me bananas. Why Google? Why is such a tiny, tiny, tiny? All right, maybe if I drop us in the parking lot, we can get this statue. Where are you? Oh, oh, oh. He's just over here. Uh, <laughs> right here. You know, 50 50 poll on oh, chat whether the statue actually exists. Yeah, he's right, he's right there. You can see his feet. Oh, yeah. There he is. Hey. This is that guy. There he is. No. <laughs> All right. Imagine it, everyone. This is where we are. We're standing next to this wonderful man here, and it's, you can see it down here. Gorgeous little man. All right. So, you are standing beside a statue of Konstantius Lofsky, the father of cosmonautics. A row of palm trees towers above you to the right and to your left are the smooth curves of the Sir Thomas Brisbane Planetarium. Just a half hour ago, you were at home watching TV. That's pretty much all you've done since they put quarantine into effect. Oh, my God, I feel this so hard. Um, just just a note, everyone, this was written before the pandemic even happened. Just, just, so we, just so we get a view in there. Four days ago, a deadly disease broke out in Brisbane City, and since then, everyone has been confined to their houses. Everybody except your Uncle Frederick. Look at him, isn't he? who bursts through your front door, dark bags under his eyes, and his crazy grey mane even messier than the last time you saw him. I will need to actually open this up to see it somewhere. <laughs> we are all I need your help, <laughs> he cried. The disease is rampant. We need a cure and we need it now. Older generations are contracting it quicker than the young. I need a youngling with a bit more immunity to help. He always needed your help. One time, when you were five, he accidentally shrunk your father to the size of a grasshopper and then dropped him in your backyard 
by accident. It was up to you to find him before the dog ate him for lunch. So here you are at the Brisbane Botanic Gardens, Mount Cutha, apparently the best place in Queensland to find the ingredients necessary for a cure. The Botanic Gardens are a living collection of plants from all around the world, your uncle told you. I've been working around the clock and tested two potential cures on two individuals, but so far it's been uh, less than successful. The uh, first one turned into a green tree frog, and the second one turned into, well, some variety of cucumber. I'm just imagining like cat videos with them jumping at cucumbers. <clears throat> you almost bailed out of the car then and there. Not exactly in the ballpark, he said. But I reckon natural ingredients are the answer. You sure that the next person won't become a cash register, you ask sarcastically. What? No, of course not. Uncle, Uncle Frederick, Frederick Link. Wait. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna, I'm gonna do, do my it. interjection. I decided that I need to do it, and and I should have been on the ball beforehand. But yes, continue. Okay. <laughs> also, I'm gonna need you to mute your microphone while I talk because the echo is like, I can't do it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I need you to collect two different plant samples from around the botanic gardens. I've installed a sophisticated piece of hardware into your phone. All you need to do is hold your phone up to the plant you want to collect and click scan. This will scan and demolecularize the demolecularize demolecularize the plant's biological structure. And when we are making the cure, it will rematerialize the part of the plant that contains the active ingredient for the cure. He grabbed a crumpled piece of paper out of his pocket and he handed it to you. I'm going back to my lab to get some equipment and a virus update. Then I'll set up a portable lab in the gardens. I'll be in touch. And then your uncle took off before you could ask any more questions. You look around. You're not exactly thrilled with the idea of being outside during a mass quarantine. You open the piece of paper. There's a list of scientific plant names. Oh, this is going to be fun. Most of them have medicinal notes scribbled next to them. And you notice the words arid, herb and indigenous, written in red ink beside about half of the plants. You shake your head. For some reason, you thought that Uncle Frederick would tell you exactly what you were looking for and where to find it. How naive of you. Your phone buzzes and you receive a message. Disease is affecting age groups in different ways. Young, zero to 50, have sore muscles, aching bones, fever and sweats. Old, the 50 plus are experiencing a mucus discharge, internal bleeding, and trouble breathing. You swallow dryly and comb through the list of plant names. Two plants immediately stand out. The symptom of Fischinal, known to the general population as comfrey. It can be used to help with aching bones and sore muscles or bruises. Or the Piper heterectum. I'm sure that is not how you say it. Also known, <laughs> <laughs> also known as the pepper vine. The leaves can be used. The leaves can be used to relieve sore gums and treat mucus discharge. So use our choices, everyone. Ready? Do we one search for the comfrey and make sure your age group is protected first? This is making an extreme assumption that the people who are doing this are young. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you are, after all, the one who will be tramping among the potential infected trying to find cures. You need a clear head, not being unable to walk because of sore muscles. This will help the younger victims of the disease but may harm the older generation. Or two, do you search for the pepper vine and make sure the older population get a cure quickly? They are, after all, falling to the disease quicker and harder than the younger victims. You may lose more people to this disease if you don't address the older generation's symptoms first. How pertinent does this feel to, mm -hmm. to what just happened over the past two years? Oh, man. <laughs> on to something. Say again. They're really on to something. I, I think so. So, I mean, a lot of premonition. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, so we're a group of very attractive young people. <laughs> Do we protect ourselves first? Um, or... Do we make sure that the older populations, the sick, the people with the autoimmune diseases are protected first? 
I feel that this was a question that not many people uh, considered in the first couple of first couple of months of the pandemic. And probably should have. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are the uh, ones trying to find the cure, you know, because we are trampling. I think we should do the noble thing and protect the oldies first. Really. Yeah, you don't you, th- you don't think that like it's just a nice bit of selfishness is what we need here. Like you know, like put on your own mask before you put on the child's mask. You know? My instincts are telling me that the writer wants you to take that option, and I feel like that option is going to lead to more disaster earlier. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, so the writer was uh, sorry. Go, Brett. So the writer, you're saying the writer was uh, expecting selfishness. I, I would say that I know the writer and I know they're a younger person. <laughs> ah, so not going for subtlety. Yeah. yeah. But being like, obviously people would just choose the, uh, the selfish option. So let's, let's present that first and then I gotcha. I mean, though, Uncle Frederick is technically the one putting the cure together, right? So, like, and he is definitely from the older generation with his crazy grey hair. So, you know, if he dies before you put the cure together, where does the collection people? Like, we don't know anything about putting the cure together. So, you know, maybe maybe you're right in that in that uh, selection there, Cliff. Yeah, it's interesting. It, we're not getting a lot of indication that uh, your uncle is going to be the most helpful person. But I also expect if he's totally out of the picture... You might be totally out of the picture. Up Shit Creek with only a partial paddle? (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) All right. I think the other question is uh, the philosophy of game versus story. Mm -hmm. So if this were a video game, then uh, often like making it, you know, getting the health choices so you can get through the level is usually the smarter choice. Um, but I think if I'm thinking as a a reader of a well themed story, then I, I would uh, go with my heart and save those orb, old people. <laughs> I was gonna say orb people. Old people. We're gonna save those old people. We're gonna save the old old people. All right. So we're going in search of the pepper vine. Excellent. This beautiful creature. This is the pepper vine. Isn't it gorgeous? Mm-hmm. So beautiful. Now, now, the trick is being in here, whether we can reach the pepper vine. So, if we go back to our little map here, so Mount Cutha Road, this is the herbarium, the library, which is where we've been parked. The pepper vine is down here on this path around here. So, the question is is close enough good enough? So in here is a beautiful forest that we want to try and get ourselves into just to set the mood. So is there an actual pepper vine at the gardens? There is an actual pepper vine at the gardens. Oh, that's um, super cool. Yeah. And it's, it's um, in a kind of a rainforesty area. Um, but I don't know whether they have, because these are all different photographs that they've obviously taken, like, on spot. So I don't know whether they've taken one that's deep enough into the forest or not. This is why it's such a cool story, because all the plants that are mentioned, I'm pretty sure, are all at those locations in the gardens. So it's mm-hmm. like you're directly able to touch all the plants and see what they're about. That's why we couldn't use the hallucinogenic one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, although let's, I mean, this is not the rainforest area. Obviously there isn't any, because the rainforest area is in here. It's in this like section of the, um, in this section of the garden here. And it's a bit light on the, uh, bit light on the photographs in this area. Cause right in here is where this, where this rainforest is. So let's just, uh, let's just put ourselves amongst some trees, you know, just breathe mm-hmm. it in. It's really cool how the uh, 
story maps to real life. Mm -hmm. Someone should make an app for that. Ah. <laughs> the question is, can we hook this broadcasting system into that app? <laughs> Ooh, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So search for the pepper vine, location three, uh, for you, our new narrator, Brett Ludwig. Mm. Take it away. There's a huge tree above you that stretches up into the sky. You'll need to meet yourself there, Emily. Wrapped around the tree is a dense, leafy green vine. The leaves are dark, glossy green. They look like little green hearts. The plaque reads, Piper Heterachium, Pepper Vine. You hold your phone up to the leaves to scan them, but it starts vibrating. It's not a message, but a call from an unknown number. You answer it and hear someone breathing on the other end of the line. Hello? Um. It's Uncle Frederick's voice. I have some bad news. T terrible news, actually. Anxiety bubbles in your chest. What? It's dad. I mean, I mean your grandfather. He's infected. You have a flashback to Grandfather pushing you on the swing. The two of you playing checkers together, him handing you an ice cream cone and patting you on the head. You need to hurry. His symptoms are worsening by the minute. You disconnect the call and wipe the tears away from your eyes. You hold your phone over the pepper vine, open the aptly named Cure app, and press the massive red Scan button that appears in the middle of your screen. When you hear the confirmation bleep, you hurriedly open your list. Your phone vibrates. New developing symptoms confirmed. Young, sore throat and aching ears. Old, swollen, painful gums, confusion and nonsense making. You identify two more plants you could use in the cure on your list. Sesgium Luhimani, Riberi, a type of lily pili. Medicinal uses by indigenous peoples included treatment of flu, colds, diarrhea, aching ears, stomach pains, and sore throats. That seems to match the symptoms of the younger victims. Prunella vulgaris, self heal, can be used to stop internal bleeding. Could be great for older victims. Do you? A. Collect the rillberry leaves. This ingredient will help the younger victims of the disease. You have a good chance of being saved, but you might be condemning your grandfather to death. Continue following the footpath until you reach the ryeberry, lily pilly, information sign. Then click the button below. Or collect the self-heal. This will help victims of the disease and ensure your grandfather is safe, but there's a good chance it will be curtains for you if you meet any infected. Turn back the way you came and follow the footpath out of the Australian rainforest. Cross the road and pass the statue of the man in the hat and follow the brick path up the past the information desk. Beautiful. So we've got new information here. <clears throat> Younger victims are worsening. So our mm -hmm. chances of survival are narrowing, everybody. Narrowing. But our grandfather apparently is on the edge of death within the past 20 minutes. So, do we stay the course? Do we continue to save dear old grandpapa? Or do we think to ourselves, maybe it is time we look after human number one? Number one. <laughs> I could almost hear the uh, Disney music in the flashback to your grandpa about being pushed on the swing, playing checkers. <laughs> And giving you an ice cream cone as you get patted on the head. Really, we're making sure it's clear that the grandpa's a great guy here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I, I mean, dear old grandpa, who else will give us ice cream, guys? If he dies, I'm sure we can make it. He's with me. I feel like being given the same kind of choice again. Makes me feel like 
there's a there's a bit of a trick to it. There's a catch. Yeah. But uh, certainly, my heart would say, save my my grandpa. Save your grandpa. Like, All right. Let's do it. Let's save grandpa. Let's save grandpa. Let's do it. Okay. So self heal. Oh goodness. Let's see which one that is. It is. Oh, yes. Okay. Not this one, not this guy, not this guy. But this one here. Look at those beautiful flower petals. Mm -hmm. So gorgeous. So delightful. Also, um, Emily, mm. I appreciated that you uh, gave the uncle a proper crazy voice. I started voicing him quite as quite a normal guy, and I was I was already you know two feet deep, so I was like, okay, well I'll just continue with this. And I realized that this guy's just a total nut job. <laughs> he is a hundred percent a nut job. I think. The, oh, I was gonna say the thing that strikes me the most about this is the fact that the phone still has like a front button. <laughs> Truly old school. Oh, uh, back in the day. Uh, so actually, this is this has put us quite near to where we need to be. So the comfrey is actually in in one of these beds in here. So it's in the herb gut. Oh, is that it? I think I unlocked it. There it is. Look at it. So pretty. So pretty. Delightful. All right. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, so many places we're not visiting, guys. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. You got to make choices. You got to make choices. You go down one path. All right. So we are in the fragrant plants and herbs garden near the drinking fountain. All around you are numerous colorful plants and flowers. There are thousands of perfumes drifting through the air. If only you had the time to stop and appreciate it. You spot a man standing by the side of the path. He has a bald patch on the top of his head and is wearing glasses. Initially, a wave of euphoria washes over you. It's a gardener, an expert. He can help you and you think, you, he can help you, you think to yourself. But then as you get closer, you see that his eyes are red and there is blood seeping from the corners of his mouth. You swallow dryly and make your way around him, giving him a wide berth. You look back and notice that he's tailing behind you. Maybe. The infected follow movement. You stop in your tracks to test. The gardener stops moving and looks around. When you start moving again, he begins to follow. Then the gardener drops to the ground and starts spewing up blood and bile. A shiver trickles down your spine. You move quickly down the path while he's distracted and locate the self-heal. The leaves are small, green and furry looking. You hold your phone over the plant, open the app and scan. When you hear the confirmation bleep, you move on. Slowly. You can hear the gardener drag his feet on the path behind you. You pick up the pace, constantly glancing over your shoulder to make sure you are keeping your distance. You figure that if you don't make any sudden movements, he will continue trailing behind you and not come any closer. While looking backwards, you step awkwardly on a raised brick in the footpath and you trip. You hit the footpath hard and hear the gardener drawing closer. You scamper to your feet. Your knees are badly grazed and your ribs feel bruised, but you're in one piece. Clearly, you can't go on like this forever. You need to lose this tra trailing contamination so you can plan your next move without death hanging over your shoulder. At the bottom of the path, you see two possible hiding places, the Cactus Collection Building and the restaurant. Do you A, hide in the Cactus Collection Building? It is marginally closer with open ends and many spiky plants to keep the gardener at bay if you need. Or do you two hide in the restaurant? It's a little further away, but you can actually put a solid wooden door between you and the infected gardener. There will be more places to hide and knives if you need to defend yourself. So everyone, how are we going to break our tail? 
I think we uh, have dispelled any illusions that the infected are not zombies with this chapter. <laughs> not that there was any debt to start with. Uh, I wonder how, why we're so sure this person is a gardener. Like, <laughs> Is, is this like a stereotype about Australian gardeners that I don't know about? That they have bald yeah, patches bald. on the top yeah, of their heads that to like and glasses? The sun. Yeah, that's right. It's like solar solar panel powering. <laughs> no, it's the hats. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, and he's standing in a garden, so that automatically means that he's a gardener, right? Like that's how that, that's how that works? Only people who garden stand in gardens? Is... Yeah. Good luck. Good work, Sherlock. Instincts, we did it. <laughs> my vague recollection of this story tells me instinctively that even though the restaurant seems like the right option, the cactus house is the better option. Well, I don't know. It depends. Like, we have like a choice between kind of like solid solid walls and knives or like plants that have inbuilt knives essentially i do like uh Don't. claire as the uh the like sort of fortune teller soothsayer on this one basically like i know. i feel like the cactuses because the less personal knife wielding you need to do just seems easier yeah, that's, that's a good point. I don't know if I could honestly defend myself with a knife. Like, chances are I would stab myself as much as I would stab the person I was trying to keep away from me. This is like those gun statistics that, like, having a gun in your house is, like, way means you're way more likely to get shot. So trying to defend yourself with a knife, right. you're much more likely to stab yourself. And we've all seen those, like, cartoon roadrunner episodes where like the person actually steps on the cactus and their butt is covered in little like cactus spines like hmm. i don't know i feel like the you know the the plants protect themselves if you surround yourself with enough of them i would also uh, argue that any attempts to lock yourself in a place with a door in a zombie movie is always disaster you will eventually they will break in and you're you're done yeah and you have no exits Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. We're going to the cactuses. All right. Cacti? Cactus society? Cactus, cactus, cactus society. Um, and so it's not in the tropical zone. I believe this is the cactus house down here. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Cactuses. Look at them. Look at them. Oh, that is really nice. Right? I find it very funny that this is like the one area that's like covered <laughs> because, you know, arid plants and all that. But, you know, obviously the reason they have to be covered is because it rains a bunch in Queensland. We wouldn't be able to keep the arid environment without like the 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 greenhouse like, you know. My favourite part of that sentence is you said, Obviously, it rains in Queensland, <laughs> whereas one third of this stream would have no clue that that was the case. <laughs> tropical, tropical Queensland. Look at this, aren't they gotcha. beautiful? Yeah, you nailed that. Look at this, like little flowers going on here. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Mm -mm. I like the other side. I have the carnivorous plants in there as well, all the Venus flytraps and stuff. I wish we could move along it rather than it being like a static shot, but mm -hmm. that's all right. We can see them kind of right over here. That's, that's like more. two more oh, weeks of AI development oh. before we could walk through static pictures <laughs> with all the generation <laughs> stuff that's coming over this year. Whoop, whoop. Love it. All right. So, narrator. Mm -hmm. Hiding in the cactus building. Take it away. The cactus house is a small L-shaped enclosure containing a large variety of cacti and bromeliads. You imagine you could spend hours in here looking at all the fascinating plants, except for the fact that an infected gardener is following you. 
You hurry up around the corner. You peek your head back and watch as the gardener continues on down the path. You're safe. For now. You message your uncle. I have the ingredients. He replies moments later. Excellent. Send the data through. You click upload samples and the progress bar slowly moves along. One ingredient and then the next. You keep watching the pathway to make sure the gardener hasn't returned. The upload finishes and you breathe a sigh of relief. Your job is done. It's now up to your uncle. Soon after, your phone vibrates. You answer the call. I've done it. I guess I will be Uncle Frederick. I've, I've done, done it, it, Uncle Frederick says. I've created a cure. Apologies, mute, oh, muted like me. It. I'm right. just taking this. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> taking the glory on this one, Emily. I'm taking this all the way home. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you reply. Uh, now all we need to do is... You hear glass smashing and the sounds of a struggle. Your uncle cries out and your heart sinks. Get out! You hear him yell into the receiver. Don't be a hero! You stare at the phone as the call is suddenly cut off. You should have been there. You might have been able to protect him if you were. But now, it's too late. Uncle Frederick is gone. You tried to create a cure, but this place is clearly too dangerous now. Maybe all of Brisbane is unsafe. Uncle Frederick's car is in the car park. You need to reach it and get as far away as possible. You gotta leave Brisbane and never look back. The end! Whoa! Okay, so you found a cure, but you don't get to know what it is because Uncle Frederick got taken over by a bunch of infected people and too bad, so sad. <laughs> Poor Uncle Frederick. Poor Uncle Frederick, yes. I mean, I like the uh, assumption that um, maybe if you just leave Brisbane, you'll be able to outrun the pandemic. <laughs> oh, oh, we, never, we were so naive back then. Well, we don't yeah. know the original, do we? We don't so, know yeah. how people, we don't, we don't know, know patient zero or anything in this. We don't know if this is transmitted via infected bites or if, uh, it's in the food or water. That could have started in Brisbane. Yeah, it could have. It could have been ground zero. Yeah, that's right. I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, from what I know of Brisbane, I don't know if it, it could contain a pandemic any better than, than the officials in Wuhan could contain a pandemic. Particularly the one good thing about so Brisbane, though, is that it is very... Uh, wide and open as a city so at least people will be able to social distance that's true that's true you were able to social distance your way out of being infected right here mm. wandered into a garden I, uh, definitely still having been in brisbane during the pandemic did have to fight some people for toilet paper but um if you've got that in the boot you should be safe <laughs> Uh, and for those in North America, uh, the boot is the trunk of your car. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so Queensland is rainy. <laughs> I'm trunk noses. What's going on? <laughs> Did we, uh, like, do we, I mean, do we want to cheat and see what would have happened if we'd gone the other direction and went into the, to the restaurant? Like, do we want Absolutely. To yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Not even a hesitation. I like it, Claire. <laughs> All right. Uh, flowering trees. I bet bacteria. we don't make it. And I bet your uncle doesn't make it. That's my guess. Ooh. Ouch. All right. All right. Here we are. Taking out by zombies. Yeah, not looking good. Not there are a lot of zombie good. hands in this, uh, this art. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, this is the wrong one. Hold on. Well, hold on. Ooh, which one are you looking at? Who's that zombie in a this bottle one. here? This is the one that we're looking at. This guy right here. Isn't he beautiful? Doesn't he look like a gardener? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. 
The restaurant is a large open plan building with shiny wooden floors and an extensive balcony that looks out on the green hills above the lagoon. The restaurant is empty. It has an eerie feel about it. There are broken plates on the floor and dried patches of blood on several of the tablecloths. You take a deep breath and look around for a good hiding spot before heading towards the kitchen. As you approach, you hear a clank from the back room and you spin around. There are also footsteps near the entrance. The gardener is right on your tail. You dive under one of the tables. Unfortunately, you bump a chair and it tips over right as the gardener enters. He sees the chair and scuttles over. From the kitchen, an infected chef makes his way to the table too. Your heart pounds. You look for something to fight with, anything. There's a knife and a fork, but they're out of reach, so you use your legs. You kick at the gardener with a leg and the chef with another. You scurry underneath another table, hoping to lose them, but in your frantic retreat, you trip over a chair and into a second table. In your haste, you don't see that this table was right against the wall. You're trapped. Right, it's like you saw into the future. Oh, Unless yeah. you can reach the knife. It's closer now. You reach, snag, then wrap your fingers around the cold steel hilt. The chef, not a meter from you, lets out an almighty sneeze. You drop the knife and cup both hands over your mouth, trying not to breathe. All of a sudden, the gardener drops to the ground and crawls under the table. You kick him in the face, but it only seems to spur him on. He claws your leg open in three bloody scratches. The chef sneezes again. Flecks of snot hit your lips. Your oh, heart zombie stops. snot. Oh, blood or breath. There's no coming back from this, even if you could get away from this stupid table. It's all over. So chances are Uncle Frederick was overrun, just as you were being overrun. It's a lose-lose. The other one was like, at least I'm alive <laughs> and I make it out. But I think we kind of made the right call. At least we were alive at the end of the adventure. We've got the right information. We could have uh, gotten into the right scientists. Uh, yeah. So you're saying that we were being a bit cowardly wanting to take the car and run. I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we do need to run to like get safe temporarily. But it sounds like we had all the makings of a cure. So it's really up to us at that point. Yeah. yeah. Really just cutting your losses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Brisbane uh, is lost. Yeah. I think this is the restaurant that's here. Let's have a look here. Uh, so it's a planetarium. Yeah, there it is. Look at this beautiful restaurant. Yeah. Visit information I, think it's, I think it's all been gone up too. Like um, when I was little, they used to have so many weddings out there. Oh, that'd be nice. In the garden. Yeah. That'd be yeah, so Yeah, they're really lovely. pretty. I wonder if, so here's a couple of places that we didn't get to visit on this adventure, which are awesome. So this is the, uh, the tropical dome, which is like this, Beautiful, brilliant glass house. Love the dome. So pretty. And it's got like, you know, the giant lily pads and um, it's hot as hell. Like Brisbane is very humid just in general, but like so yeah. hot. Um, I just went there over Christmas and even just the difference between Sydney and Brisbane was startling. Um, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't doubt it at all. Mm -hmm. um so yeah so the tropical dome is like a fun place that you get to visit in this uh the other one is uh the japanese garden um which oh i think that's one of the walkways through the through the uh through the avenues but this is some beautiful yep. lovely japanese garden weeping willows gorgeous grass which you can't sit on obviously because what is grass for but to look at and uh and then just gorgeous like little so this is like a beautiful little waterfall that comes down and um there's a there's a little kind of you know seating area there's a little goda it's just beautiful and then there's also a bonsai garden 
um, but I have no idea how you'd be able to figure out which one of these it was. Um, but yeah, Brisbane Botanic Gardens, if anyone gets to go visit them, they are just very, very pretty. Um, and at the same time, you can see whether you did better than us and actually find a cure. <laughs> Yeah. Um, actually, so with the um, with the app, you can do um, adventures uh, in what we call spoiler mode. So even if you aren't in Brisbane, you can uh, you can get the app. You can open up the infected. It's freely available on the app, um, and and you can turn on spoiler mode, um, and you can you can kind of tap your way through. Uh, and I promise that you'll get much better voice acting than myself and Brett. Um, the wonderful, <laughs> wonderful Kevin Powell, who is an amazing voice actor, uh, does the does the narration for this story. Um, and not only that, but it is scored um, by a brilliant musician called um, uh, uh, Shay, um, and uh, and he has this uh, amazing audio backdrop to the narration. Uh, and of course, this story couldn't have been possible at all without the author, who is Ben Carey. Um, and so uh, all of uh, these wonderful people, uh, when they first created this story, lived in Brisbane. They are now all scattered to the winds of the earth doing amazing things yeah. from music, um, uh, design in the uh, you know forests of India to Sydney, uh, radio stations to, uh, to, to you know, Brisbane, Germany. Um, and so we're just we're very lucky that we, we got to, to have a very camp, um, very silly zombie story um, that we could we could experience in in Brisbane Botanic Garden. It was really special. The whole creation process of the story was awesome, and uh, meeting all of those creatives like we're still friends now, and we will stay in touch. So it's, it's yeah. Thanks, thanks for getting the gang together. Em. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. And that's this is this is the best part about doing this kind of game, right? Is that we get to work with these awesome creators. So uh, yeah, I, I encourage you all to to download the app Story City. It's free. The uh, the infected. See whether you can do better than than the rest of us. Maybe you should be selfish and save yourself rather than trying to save your grandpa. And <laughs> you might end up in 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 better in better straits than we did. So yeah, maybe it was like. Licorice's favorite ice cream that he gave you. Right, no good. right, right. Maybe From under was, the bus. <laughs> yeah, those fond memories were actually like Stockholm syndrome. Um, <laughs> See, if only that. you could hear the soundtrack, it would be creepy music as you remembered your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. And of course, like this, this adventure only goes through a tiny part of the Botanic Gardens. They're so big, um, mm. and uh, yeah, and so you can you can see some fun things. Um, but I think that's true uh, of most Botanic Gardens, isn't it? I do like that uh, we have kind of a sister story here. There's a botanical garden story in uh, near Edmonton too, actually. That is a good point. Yes, it. Um, <clears throat> so there's. Our botanic gardens are kind of on the edge of the city, and um, it's a it's a Sherlock Holmes story. So you are Watson. Oh no way! Yeah, you're helping Sherlock Holmes to uh, to solve the mystery of where Winnie the Pooh disappeared to. So um, it is a convention of the uh, public domain. All of these public domain characters have come together to shoot the breeze, uh, do whatever academic public domain uh, characters do and uh and winnie the pooh who's meant to be the the honorary um uh inductee for the year uh, goes missing and so sherlock and, and and watson are trying uh to find uh to find him so you get to meet all sorts of characters from you know elizabeth bennett from pride and prejudice to peter pan to uh cthulhu so <laughs> to, to really the runs the gabbit yeah, yeah, the whole gamut. So I love it. I mean, like that's that's what public domain is for, right? That I love that we have those kind of copyright um, laws that allow you to um, be able to, you know, build on and 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 remix and and with the with the you know the culture that we all grew up with and and loved and yeah, I. It'll be interesting to see what happens when Mickey Mouse is up for public domain again. 
It's like opening a pantry and having to make a meal with whatever's in there. Right, right. Yep, exactly. <laughs> well, Claire, thank you so much for joining us for the very first adventure hour. We really appreciate thank you. you. Sorry um, we died. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> you just have to, everyone will just have to go check out the story. Right. That's exactly right. And um, uh, where can everyone come and find you and find the cool things that you're doing? Um, just Instagram. Um, it's at R-L-C-L-N, which sounds a bit weird, but I'm also Claire Neal Creates. And also my website is clearnealcreative.com. Beautiful. Thank you, Claire, so much for joining us. No worries. I appreciate Thank you. you. Next time you have a Brisbane story, let me know. Oh, don't you know it. Um, in <laughs> fact, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to do the selfish thing here and I'm going to ping you on email uh, right after this and uh, let's let's jump on a let's jump on a zoom call and also have a have a bit of like a chat uh, a chat where we don't we don't necessarily have to uh, to be performing for the wonderful people in twitch here we can we can just catch up it'd be lovely all right thank <laughs> Sounds you everyone. great it was lovely adventuring with you uh see you next week thank you see you everyone uh